prevent them from flying in the wind while they were driving the team. Okay, let's start with the basics. Begin by draping the necktie around the collar with the seam lying along the collar facing in. The white end of the tie should be on the side of your dominant hand. If you're right-handed, then start on the right. First, let's walk through the steps of the foreign hand. Start with the wide end of the tie on your right and extending a foot below the narrow end. Cross the wide end over the narrow end and back underneath. Continue around, passing the wide end across the front of the narrow end once more. Pass the wide end up through the loop between the knot and your neck. Pass the wide end down through the knot in front. Draw the knot up tight to your collar by holding the narrow end of the tie and sliding the knot snug. Now let's walk through the foreign hand again. Turn up the collar and button it at the neck. This allows the necktie to glide gently along the collar without wrinkling or stretching the fabric. Begin with the white end of the tie on the side of your dominant hand and extending about a foot below the narrow end. Notice that on most ties, a diagonal seam is about midway on the tie. This is usually a good gauge as to where to make your first cross. Cross the white end of the tie over the narrow end and back underneath. Bring the white end over the front and then pass it up between the neck and the knot, holding the loop open with your left finger. Pass the white end down through the knot. And notice that by tucking the loop through with your index finger of the right hand, this allows you to maintain the knot while you pull the material through. And this goes for all knots. Shape your knot and draw it up tight. Turn down the collar. And there you have a nice, clean, foreign hand. Next, we'll help you master the half Windsor. Now pay close attention because I'm about to reveal a new twist to the traditional directions. Why is this necessary? Well, the half Windsor has always appeared to be a little lopsided, until now. Start with the wide end of the tie on your right and extending a foot below the narrow end. Cross the wide end over the narrow end and wrap it back underneath. Bring the wide end up towards your face and turn down through the loop to your right, not your left. This is the new twist. Traditional directions say to go to your left. However, we found that bringing the wide end to your right results in a more symmetrical knot. This allows you to pass the wide end around the front from your right to left. Then, go up between your neck and the knot and down through the knot in front Tighten carefully and draw up to the collar to complete the new and improved half Windsor. Now, if you've ever had problems getting your finished tie to hang to the proper length, here's a little trick. Start by letting the wide end hang to twice the length as the narrow end. To check if you've done this properly, draw the wide end up to the edge of the neck. The length of the doubled end should be equal in length to that of the narrow end. Now you'll want to experiment with any new tie though because there are a number of variables that affect the length of the final tie. The thickness of the material and the length of the tie itself. The thickness of the neck and the length of the torso. Also, knot styles require differing lengths of material so you'll want to vary the point at which you make your first cross. Now let's step through the half Windsor once more. The wide end of the tie should be on the side of your dominant hand and extending at least a foot below the narrow end. Cross the wide end over the narrow end and back underneath. Bring the broad end up towards you and then down through the loop between your neck and the knot and sweep the wide end to the right this time, not to the left. This is the new twist. This allows you to bring the broad end from the right across the front to the left and then bring the broad end up between your neck and the knot Pass it down through the loop, draw your material, and then draw it up tight. And there you have a half Windsor. See how even the two sides are? I should point out that after being tied, the tips of the necktie should touch the waistband of the pants, and the two ends of the tie should either be equal in length or the narrow end a fraction shorter. Remember, the inside of the wide end of the tie has a band 
into which the narrow end of the tie is tucked to hold it in place. The Windsor. If not done properly, this knot can come out looking very large, bulbous, and unsightly. So pay special attention on this one. It's worth the extra effort. Start with the wide end of the tie on your right and extending a foot below the narrow end. Cross the wide end over the narrow end and bring it up through the loop and down to your left. Next, bring the wide end around behind the narrow end to your right. Bring the wide end up from the front and through the loop coming back down on your right. Then bring the wide end to the left across the narrow end. Turn and pass the wide end up through the loop and complete by slipping the tie down through the knot in front, tighten and draw up comfortably to the collar. Most standard neckties come in lengths from 58 to 60 inches. Taller men, or those of you who choose to wear a Windsor knot, which requires the most length material, will require a somewhat longer tie. Now, let's step through the Windsor once more, slowly. Take the wide end over the narrow end, and up and around the narrow end on the left, crossing underneath, bring the wide end up and towards you, down through the loop between your neck and the knot on the right. This forms the V. Now bring the broad end from the right across the front of the knot to the left and bring the knot up between your neck and the knot. Tuck it down through the loop in the front of the knot. Shape and form and draw it up. There you have a full Windsor. When properly tied, it should have a nice clean dimple like this. Bow ties. Though you'll occasionally see them worn by the college professor or stock market analyst, bow ties are usually worn at formal engagements with a pleated front shirt. They make a unique fashion statement and depending upon the setting, they give a man a suave or intellectually professional look. The general rule of thumb is that the bow tie should never be broader than the widest part of the neck and should not extend beyond the outside points of the collar. Start with the end in your left hand, one and a half inches below that in your right hand. Cross the longer end over the shorter end and pass up through the loop. It's important to make sure the tie is snug against your collar at this point. Form the front loop of the bow by doubling up the right side and placing it across the collar points. Hold this front loop with the thumb and forefinger of your left hand. Drop the long end down over the front. Using your forefinger, push the hanging end of the tie up behind the loop in front and poke the resulting loop through the knot behind the front loop as shown. Even the ends and tighten. It's really not as complicated as it looks. Here, let me show you. Begin with the left side, an inch and a half longer than the right side. Cross the long side over the chart and up underneath. Now, here's a little trick Tighten at the neck and be sure to even up the two ends. Now, draw the lower portion up and double it over on itself. Now sweep the top end over the front and then poke in from behind. Draw it through. Turn down your collar. And there you have it, a classic statement for your next presentation or formal engagement. Now for our final demonstration, a new style that's finding wide popularity, the Shelby. Start with the tie inside out. Cross the wide end under the narrow end. Bring it up, then over and down through the loop to your right. Sweep the wide end across the V from your right to your left. Then take the wide end up and through the loop between your neck and the knot. Now bring it back down through the knot and tighten. As you may have noticed, 
The steps involved in tying the Shelby are definitely different, particularly step one. Begin with the tie inside out. Cross the broad end of the tie under the narrow end and draw the wide end up towards you and down between your neck and the knot. Sweep the broad end to the right. Now pass the broad end across the front of the tie from right to left. Bring the wide end up between your neck and the knot and down through the loop in the front. Draw your material down, shaping. Drop your knot to the collar. Lower your collar. And there you have the most recent addition to the classic collection of knots, the Shelby. See how nicely it dimples?